I believe it was Kesha that said, your love, your love, your love is my drug. And you know what? Neurobiologists just might agree with that. Hey everyone, Lacey Green here for D News. Kesha is only one of the most recent in a long line of artists who have compared love to a drug. I mean, the highs and lows of love are really one of the main inspirations out there for art and music. And there's a neurobiological basis for all the hubbub. The experience of love is super intense and real. In the brain, it actually looks a bit like you're on cocaine. One of the major evolutionary theories posited by neurobiologists separates romantic love into three stages. The first, is lust, which is the spark of attraction that kind of makes you think about sexy things with them, like kissing them or touching them, you know, like you're really far from being repulsed by them. During this stage, men and women experience a spike in testosterone, the hormone responsible for sex drive. For some relationships, the lust is, you know, consummated and then they move on. But some relationships go on to stage two. Stage two is the attraction phase. This is when things get a little more crazy up here. If triggered, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin take your brain temporarily hostage. People in this phase seem like they're losing their mind, and in a way, they kind of are. Dopamine pathways in the brain trigger the brain's reward system, which is responsible for the obsessive behavior. You crave them, can't wait to see them. You think about all the wonderful possibilities that you have together. Norepinephrine makes your heart race and your hands clammy, you might lose sleep or experience a decrease in appetite, and serotonin, the hormone responsible for feelings of peace and calm, dips down when you're falling in love because nature's a jerk. So we feel heightened anxiety and in combination with dopamine we feel the highest highs when things go well and the lowest of lows when they don't. In relationships where the attraction phase is experienced by both people, things are all intense and euphoric for a little while but then they mellow out as the couple advances to stage three. Stage three is the attachment phase. It's when you settle and get comfortable with your partner, anxieties drop, and you begin forming a deeper and more intimate bond as you get to know each other really, really well, sometimes too well. And you learn that your relationship maybe isn't so hot now that you're not basically high all the time. The stage's main hormone is oxytocin. Oxytocin is a cuddle hormone and it's released when people touch, both sexually and non-sexually. It's responsible for the intense bond between mom and baby and for the days you feel after you have an orgasm. Oxytocin is the hormonal glue in a long-term relationship and in a healthy relationship, it leaves you with a profound sense of attachment and trust, which is a good foundation for what sometimes comes next, having kids. Personally, I think understanding the neurobiology behind love makes it that much more beautiful that love is so essential to our species that it's hardwired in our brains. But I do know people who feel like it's really unromantic and just too technical, takes away all the magic. So let me know what your take is in the comments below. And if you haven't seen it yet, go show some love to Anthony's video because I think he's feeling a bit of Valentine's Day stress. I'll see you guys next time.